Hi everyone, I'm Cecilia Louie of Paper Zen. In a previous video, I showed you the types of quilling circle templates that you can buy and talked about the pros and cons. So here's my design of the ultimate quilling circle template board. I'll leave a link below for you to download my free printable PDF. Okay, let's get started on making our template. Here's my wish list. Multiples of the same size. For most of the circles, I was able to fit six in a row. Some can only fit five or four, depending on the size. The diameter is shown in both inches and millimeters. There are 10 increments between the sizes from 3 16ths of an inch up to one inch, or in imperial measurements, five millimeters to 25 millimeters. My version is deep, so it prevents the coils from springing out. It's quite firm, so the template doesn't bounce around like it does with my dollar store version with foam feet. On the left here is a ruler in inches. For a number 12 circle, I would just measure the 6 twice, and for a 24 circle, just measure up to the 8 three times. Now this is my favorite part, the length of quilling paper strip needed to fill the circle. And why is this my favorite part? Because now when I design a pattern, I just have to write down this single number. Now of course, this paper length is only a suggested length. It's based on the conventional quilling paper I have in my craft room. If you're using thicker paper, a different tool, or if you're wanting fuller or looser coils, then these lengths might not work for you. In that case, then simply scratch out my measurement and write down your own. Before we dive into how to make your own quilling circle template board, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, I hope you'll help me by clicking the like button. And if you're new to my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. So method number one, we're just going to take a regular quilling strip of paper. It's about four inches long, but there's not really any specific formula. I just arbitrarily chose four inches. And I happen to have here a metallic uh, crochet hook, nothing special about this. The only thing that I really like about it is the circumference of the tool itself because it happens to match the circumference of my first circle pretty much exactly. And I'm just going to pretend that it's a large quilling needle and coil this up. So I'm just going to close that coil up. And before it sets in place, I'm just going to squeeze my coil so that all those edges line up. And now we've got a perfect circle for our template. Then all we have to do is put some glue down on plastic card. We can just pick up our coil and glue that into place. Now don't forget to make your circle template shorter than the coil that you're going to put inside or else it's going to be hard for you to take it out. For method number two, you can visit the hardware store and you can buy what's called nylon flat washers. And they're quite cheap to buy quite a few of these. And you just wanna look for the inside circumference to match what we have on this template. And you can glue them down to the template using a hot glue gun. And if you don't have a hot glue gun, you can use what I'm going to show, which is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. And you can actually see on the back here, the description does say that you can use it for metal and plastic. So I'm just going to dab a little bit of glue here and there because I don't want the excess to squeeze out when I glue it down to the template. The washers I'm using seem to be a good depth if you're using 1 8 inch paper. And if you need more depth, I even tried gluing two nylon washers together and it seemed to hold. For method number three, you can just take some mat board and cut it to 3 8 of an inch wide. You can see that when you put it down on either side of these rows, it's going to act as a fence to make sure that your quilling doesn't go beyond that. So let's just glue that down just to show you what I mean. And I've spaced out all these rows to be 3 8 of an inch. You can see how it expands to fit within that gap. And even though this tail is sticking out here, it doesn't really matter because the confines are, you know, keeping it in its place. 
For method 4, I found adhesive foam squares at the dollar store. Just place two on either side of the circle and allow your coil to expand. For method number 5, we can use some circle cutters. And these are two that I've had in my craft room for decades. And I love them both, but I actually love the NT cutter the most. This is so strong, it can actually cut through matte board and I've done it with great success and it does uh, leave a very smooth circle. Let me show you how they both work. Now the Olfa one can cut from one centimeter up to 15 centimeters in diameter. And if this is 16 millimeters, then I would just bring this to my ruler and measure eight millimeters. And then we're going to just arbitrarily, you know, look for a center of the hole here and push down and just go across. Now, I've had this for many years and my blade is no longer all that sharp. But what I do is I just kind of gently go over the same area a little bit at a, at a time. And you can actually hear the paper fibers as it's cutting. And when it cuts through, you don't hear the scraping of the paper anymore. Now, I'm sure if you actually have a newer blade than I have, then you would cut through your circle more smoothly than I did. This ha has been in my drawer for a long time, so I don't have any more new blades, and so I'm, I'm getting a rougher cut than hopefully you'll get when you have a brand new blade. And what's kind of cool about this one is that it stores blades right here for you. And as you can see, it's all empty. And the NT cutter can cut from 1.8 up to 17 centimeters in diameter. This is a guide to help you center holes and get a judge of the circumference that you want to cut. And then this is the unit. So just like the Olfa, it's also got a little storage compartment here and that's where you can store extra blades. Now, my fingers are rubbing around here because I've secured my blade. I always, you know, put it safely away so that I don't accidentally cut myself when I go to use this again. So this part here is a rubber kind of cap to prevent you from hurting yourself on this side here. And that just stays right on top. And then here, this part, this knob here, releases this blade here. So you see this knob here, we're going to loosen it just a little bit and push the blade up just a little bit to extend beyond the metal piece right here. Now what's so great about the NT cutter is this part right here. This is a rubberized disc that you can use to protect the center of your circle. So in the case of the Olfa, you see here, this is what we're more used to seeing. This tip here ends up making a hole in your disc. And in our case, of course, it doesn't matter. It, it, you know, if, it, if it's in there, it, it, we don't care. We're gonna be throwing this away, but I just thought I'd point that out. This is the unique feature about this cutter. If you want to keep this portion, let's just say you're cutting a photo and you don't wanna harm the middle of that photo, this is the cutter that you want. Now, in our case, because we don't care about the inner circle, we can actually remove it. Isn't that so cool? So then from there, you're wondering, oh, well, how does that stay in the middle? Ha ha, that's what this part here is for. So we just turn this part here and watch what happens. Do you see? Now there's a spike that comes out of the middle. Isn't that so cool? Then from here, there's another knob right here and there's a ruler. It's kind of probably gonna be hard to show. It's right here do you see right there but and then there's a triangular part that's pointing towards the ruler so we would just loosen this knob and that's going to allow us to move the blade however we want so i just found that placing a ruler across the bottom here i can see more clearly 
the measurement that I'm going for. And I'm just going to do a 20 centimeter circle right now because uh, I've already got all these other items here glued in the way so I need I need some area to move around in. So I'm just going to arbitrarily look for the center and make a hole here so that I can find it more readily. And I'm going to look from the side here and find the center of the hole, put this down and cut across. And that cut a super clean circle. And I can see that I'm a little bit off, so certainly I would suggest that you try it on a scrap piece of paper and make sure that, you know, the measurement here is is as precise as you would want it. And if my love for this circle cutter isn't obvious enough, another reason why it can cut so well is because as you see me going across, what we're doing is putting downward pressure to your work surface in a in a you know basically a a 90 degree downward pressure when you're using something like this you're going around and around and as we go around the hole that is being used for this part here gets a little bit wider the more you go so if you tried to cut matte board using this the circle here would get bigger and bigger as you go around this one doesn't do the same thing. Your downward pressure is going to allow that to stay where it is and it won't wiggle all around as it circles and makes that cut. So if you're into making circles, you know, this is a great choice. After you finish cutting out your circles, you're going to want to raise your template above your work surface. And to do that, what you can do is turn it over and take some scrap mat board and basically glue it down to any areas that you haven't cut out. And of course you would want to put some strips in between those circles and things like that just to give it some structure. And if you want deeper coils then you would just simply layer two on top of one another. And I know what you must be thinking, okay then which method did she use to make hers? And I have to admit, I didn't use it, any methods by hand. I cut this using a Cricut Explore Air, and I'll show how to do that in a future video.